Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Margaret Pennard and you're on booktube and we're doing something a little differently today. So you may have cottoned on to that fact because this is a premiere instead of a live, but I will still say howdy to y'all in the comments. If you are here saying hello, I will be in the chat. So hi, hi everybody, nice to see you. So today um, we are doing, and I say we, you'll know why in a second, a simultaneous release of marketing videos for author tubers. So we all got an assignment in my little group to read this book, You Must Market Your Book by Hon Honoré Quarter. Ta-da! It came out earlier this year and I got my hands on a copy. And we were gonna discuss our reactions, our experiences with trying out some of the things in this book and how we liked it. So um, I'm going to first talk about what this started me doing and the effect it had on me, um, which is all very good this spring and summer because I read this a couple months ago now. And then I'll talk about sort of the nuts and bolts of the book itself and sort of their book review. So apologies, booktubers, if this isn't the book review you are looking for today, but if you're into marketing and are curious about how to book market, you may want to stay anyway. The we, just for those curious about that hat tip at the beginning, is the little marketing collective mastermind group that we have going for uh, a few author tubers. So let me know, leave a comment if you've seen other people launching something with a similar title and the same book in the thumbnail and you'll figure out who it is. <laughs> So yeah, marketing and experiments. And that is the first thing, first positive effect that this book has had on me. So I know Honoré Corder from a long time ago when I started writing. She had a blog, she was on podcasts, she's a very authoritative voice in the field. And I didn't know she was still in the field because I'd sort of gone off in my sub niche category and sort of had, um, you know, gotten down to very detailed advice. So this is more general advice, and it really, despite the fact that I've resisted writing crafts, writing craft books for, I don't know, like a year or more when Morgan Lee was first um, asking if people wanted to reread writing craft books. Anyway, I did this for our mastermind group and it started me on a very positive uphill tick. So here's what I will say. I am a person who likes large um, format note-taking. So like this is my first set of notes that I took, <laughs> but I condensed it down to, let's see, this, this one right here for the video. So let me just dive in. I've got a new marketing campaign. I don't know if it shows yet, but I'm very excited about it in a way that I haven't been in a long time. Um, before the pandemic. So if you follow me, you will maybe know that I have six books out. They sort of trickled out um, and I'm a slower writer. So I write historical fiction and fantasy and I've had several drawer books in the past few years, um, which means that I've put a lot of work into it and then I get stuck at a certain point and it goes in the drawer. Yes, you, you know what I'm talking about. So I haven't had a lot of new releases to practice marketing on and I've gotten pretty rusty about what's the new thing people are doing and what's the new guidance on the old stuff that I used to do. But I did release a book last fall, last October, Fabled Passages, a short story collection. And so I did get to try some new things, draft to digital, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, <laughs> it just underlined Souligner the fact that I need to boost my marketing game. So this book, You Must Market Your Book, She Ain't Lying, helped me sort of get a handle on that again. And I felt lifted up enough to start planning. Again, I said I read this a couple months ago. So I did the first sweep of comments about the book and then drilled down to the stuff that I thought was really useful and sort of thought about it because you really have to reflect on your own circumstances and what will work for you and then started implementing. So my new marketing campaign, it's already rejuvenated my marketing muscles. So that's good. 
I had given up on Facebook. So our, our first point is that you can't give up on a large part of your audience. Um, you always hear, f go where your readers are, right? And I know in historical fiction, I have plenty of older readers who are still on Facebook every day. And because I had gotten um, barred from my author page like a year ago, I was just I had thrown in the towel and was very frustrated. No one would respond to my emails. I couldn't get into my page. They wouldn't let me in. And I was just like, the hell with it. I'm just never gonna go on Facebook for anything business centered again. But the resilience, the resilience came back and I started a new Facebook group. Why not? A new Facebook group, it's called TLT Book Chat and you can join. I will put it in the chat at this moment. And it's just for people to talk about books. So it's not necessarily limited to my books. It's not necessarily limited to uh, eclectic books. It can be whatever is the latest and greatest. Just like a very open and friendly forum to talk about books. You wanna know, know a guy who knows about books? I'm your girl. So I restarted a Facebook, new group, starting over, clean sheet of paper, we're good to go, right? The second thing is that I tried a new scheduler. So I have been in the business for 10 years and I've been through several iterations of schedulers. So there's Hootsuite, there's Buffer, there's Later. These are all sort of the old names, right? And in the new generation, there's all sorts of things that schedulers can do now. I'm working for a magazine and they use Planable, and that's pretty high powered, even though it has a lot of bugs. But during the AWC, that's AuthorTube Writing Conference, for any who don't know, one of the presenters who, whose channel I love is The Courtney Project, and she went all out discussing the benefits and work smarter, not harder uh, ways of uh, smarter Q, Q as in a tail. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing pigtails. And um, so I thought, I have a 30-day trial. I might as well use this and use this as an excuse to get into the details again, right? So I am trying this new trial and experimenting with posting things to Facebook regularly, posting things to Instagram again regularly, which I had also abandoned, posting things to LinkedIn, which I had sort of logged out of and forgotten about because it's for professional people. Well, you know what? I'm professional too. So like that's gotten me a new lease on life. And in general, uh, let's see, we've got IG Reels. I did my first on purpose Instagram Reel the other day. We've got YouTube Shorts, which I did an intensive bit of in April for April Camp Nano. And now I'm figuring out how to repurpose those and planning on it. So that's fun. But I think in general, the uplift that this book has given me is about big picture thinking. And I'm a person who likes both the 10,000 foot level and the nitty gritty details in terms of control. And I'm, you know what else I am? Here's what I thought of. I'm a zero waste philosophy person. So I really don't like wasting materials, time, gasoline, you know, anything in this circular economy, right? We don't have it to lose. And I thought, oh, I've been losing all of this, wasting all of this content all these years. So yeah, so looking at it that way was, was kind of revolutionary. So my plan is to repurpose content to figure out where I do it first, what the flow is from platform to platform, if that works, set a date to evaluate it and evaluate it and then change if needed. Revolutionary, I know. So it's not so much the um, ideas that are new, it's the encouragement, you can do this, this is how it works, you know, just sort of permission, I guess, to try. So that has really been working for me this year. So that's great. Um, and now I'm going to sort of segue into the nuts and bolts review of the book. So it's a very slim book. I think it's less than a hundred pages. Let me check. I think, I think, let me verify here. Nope, it's 107. <laughs> okay, so 107. So it's a very slim volume. And the things I like about it, it didn't take long to read, but it does take long to sort of reflect and, and implement, obviously, because that's going to take a lot of thinking and processing. 
Honoré Corder's voice is great. I love her encouragement, her practical side, her down-to-earthness, her this is my experience. That's all great. Um, the knowledge base that she draws from is obviously incredible. She's had lots of interviews. She's had lots of clients. She's done this many times. And so you can trust that a lot of these things are um, still true. But the graphical representations. So while it is a slim volume, she does put in some of the tables and worksheets and type of things that she uses. Ooh, there we go. That she uses um, in some of her other works. So she has a lot of nonfiction sort of ecosystem um, about the writing industry. She has lots of tools for that. So lots of tools to ask yourself how you can make this work for you. So that means that there's lots of great questions for you to ask yourself and as to how to apply this to your book and your um, goals. On the other hand, um, it is very short. I usually like things a little meatier for nonfiction books. And um, she does say several times that stuff is available in other books and other courses. And I know that is good practice when you're when someone has bought one of your things to sell them some of your other things because they might be open to it. But um, it was a little too much for me and it made me feel like there was stuff that was definitely related to marketing that maybe belonged in this book. So I wish more of it had been in the book. And then the other major thing is as a historical fiction and fantasy novelist, she had several points that were really not applicable to fiction. So I would say um, you would have to majorly tweak those or really get like an, a companion book to, to zoom in on that better. Um, so like, what did I say? Uh, bulk sales stuff, marketing with finding clients with your book, right? So a fiction novel, is you're not utilizing your book to find clients. So that sort of doesn't apply. And there are some things like that in the book that are for nonfiction writers, but not for novelists. So, but all in all, um, she asks really good questions. She has really good examples of how she's made things work for her. Um, she has a very upbeat and positive voice that I loved listening to and working with when I was dialoguing with my own business self. And I would recommend, it's very short. It's a good kick in the pants if you need that. And she's a lovely person. So uh, a good model to follow, not just for marketing your book, but also looking at what she's done and seeing how you could do your own version of that, you know? Make it the same, but new. It's the same book advice, right? So anyway, there we are. There is our simultaneous release experiment. I hope you have enjoyed all our different reviews of You Must Market Your Book, Increase Your Impact, Sell More Books, and Make More Money by Honoré Quarter. That's all for today, and I hope you enjoyed karaoke last night. And, you know, I have something really fun coming up for August, so hold on to your hats. Other than that, thanks for watching. Come on by again soon. Subscribe, like if you liked this content, and I will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.